Some decisions are made with the mind, others are made with the heart. My choice to buy the Fiesta was completely the latter. It's a car that at the time I knew nothing about, and it's also a car which, by all accounts, should not have survived. Something about the ad spoke to me. Maybe it was the angle of the photos. Maybe it was all the love and affection that had been poured into it in the form of new and rebuilt parts. Or maybe it was the price tag. It must have been something. Because at the time, I knew of the first-gen Fiesta, but I had never seen one. I didn't even know they were sold in the United States. All I knew was that it was a bright green old Ford with amazing patina, and maybe that was why it was so alluring. At that point, there were other buyers ahead of me, and there was no guarantee I would even get a shot at buying it. Yet later that night, I recreated the Fiesta on the Xbox. I drove it around all night, and I dreamed about owning it. And as luck would have it, a couple days later, it was mine. Of course, I was not the first one to love this car. Before Cooper and his father James, a string of owners thought that for some odd reason, it was relevant to save it, to preserve it while so many of its kind were lost to time. Ford sold well over a million first-gen Fiestas worldwide, but the vast majority of them went to Europe. And although the US spec cars got the high-performance 1.6-liter engine by default, which is only available on the high-end XR2 model in Europe, all the other engines were much smaller, Americans were still much more used to driving things like this with about a million liters, unless you were a modern businessman with worldly sensibilities or a pot-smoking hipster on the West Coast. Most everyone else was driving some form of lumbering boat with 10 horsepower per liter and a boot so large you could turn it into a hot tub. So much like any other compact car of the time, that made the Ford Fiesta a throwaway. An econo box that was good while it lasted, but wasn't worth fixing, and it certainly wasn't worth taking care of. Yet either through luck or intention, this one was saved. Maybe it's just because it's green. Or perhaps it's because it's sturdy. It's got a good heart. It was always there for the people who counted on it. It survived decade after decade relatively unscathed. And as so many others were given up on, this one grew more and more rare every year. I don't know this for sure, but this may very well be the only running, driving green Mark I Ford Fiesta left in the United States. And if I'm wrong about that, well, actually, it would be pretty cool if there were more. A couple shout-outs real quick. First to Cooper and his father James, the sellers. Guys, I'm honored to carry this car's torch, and I really hope I give it a good home. Also, James told me that he races Mini Cooper, so did he name his child after a car? Because that would be pretty awesome. Of course, Cooper's definitely a better name than Clubman or Countryman or Convertible, though personally I would have gone for BMW Mini Cooper S John Cooper Works GP, but I digress. Shout out to my brother Matthew, who, despite looking 32 in this video, was actually 15 at the time. He was on the ground in the first five seconds calling out problems under the car while I was still standing there looking at it in sheer amazement, so props to him for being an intrepid young gearhead. Finally, shout out to my friend Scott, who fixed the collapsed fender on my trailer in the dead of night, first by welding on a bracket, and when that didn't work, he rammed it with a forklift. <laughs> Also, Scott, thanks for letting me use the lift, and I gotta say, that Ford in there really improved the view. As far as projects go, the Fiesta doesn't really seem all that bad. The floors were patched, and someone riveted in sandwiched layers of metal without any filler between them, so we need to address that before water gets in, but otherwise it was pretty solid underneath. The body didn't flex or bend on the lift, which is huge, and of course it ran and drove, although I will say it's been driven about 5 miles in the last 15 years, and all of those were pretty recently, so... We're not out of the woods just yet. But let's take a look at the rest of it. For that, I'll throw it over to myself in the warehouse. Hey there, me, how's the interior looking? Interior's not all that bad. It's mismatched. I noticed there's a gray rear seat and some tan front seats. I don't think it came that way, but the seats aren't really in bad shape. You see a little tear on the bolstering there on the passenger side, but the driver's side, aside from a little separation right here, it's in really good shape. Oh, the doors, they make this wonderful hollow sound. It makes you feel very safe. Listen to this. <laughs> That's crash protection. The weather stripping, I don't know. Oh, it comes right off. Look at that. Uh, uh, so that probably, uh, we can just glue that down and Forget about it. Door cards are in decent shape. They just kind of need to be reattached, I think. But all the fabric is there. The dash is not bad. I was really surprised it's not completely cracked. It's made of this super hard plastic. It's 
I think that's where Ford started to get the idea that they could just make all their cars out of plastic. But to their credit, it hasn't cracked at all, and it's definitely been out in the sun. So kudos where kudos are due. Not bad. Headliner, well, it's, it's not bad. It's certainly got a hole in it back there. There is a triangle window over there, which if you're not familiar, that is basically your air conditioning. There's almost no circulation in these old cars unless you have those windows open. The steering column trim is missing, and I'm not sure why a bunch of these wires have been tapped and modified, but I do know that the headlight switch, well, that's not right. That's not, that's not an original Ford component. The speedometer shows 40 something thousand miles. It's very hard to read, but somewhere around 47,000 miles, which I would believe, I, I believe it only has 47. I don't think it has 147. This right here is actually a feature of the passenger sun visor. It's always down because, well, it's a sun visor, right? It's supposed to block the sun. So you try to put it up, it doesn't stay up because why would it? On the driver's side, well, somebody attached a bobby pin through the headliner. Not my first choice of ways to fix that, but I guess it works. Missing a couple trim panels in here, I think, where there should be carpet, especially because there's a ground right there. I imagine there's supposed to be carpet over that. Another nice feature in here is the shift linkage. It makes an audible noise to let you know that you're changing gears. I think it's actually a three-speed overdrive, technically, but adds a four-speed. Got a little rust there. Let's, let's just don't look at that. Don't forget about that. Coming around to the back, this is the back of a Mark I Ford Fiesta. Look at those tiny little taillights. There's no yellow in the taillights. That's always something I like about foreign market cars or uh, primarily foreign market cars. Obviously massive holes where the rear bumper should be. One thing you don't notice are reverse lights. So it turns out the reverse lights are supposed to be in the bumper. Well, the bumper's gone. That means the reverse lights are gone. So. I guess I'll we'll have to figure something out about that. There's a little rust there. We'll just move on past that. Fiesta, I think the sticker here had a British flag on it and had some other writing on it at one point. I think it's original. I've seen it on other Fiestas online. Uh, license plate lights, don't think they work, but that's all right. Oh, a little rust there. Let's just let's move up here. Something weird about this, it only lets you open that with the key in there. I can't pop the key and then open the trunk. Oh, turns out I can. Okay. It's actually really practical too because, uh, oh, need the key, don't we? That's super practical. You can open it without a key. Yeah, that's that. Just as I was saying. You must have the key to open the trunk. Once you're in the trunk, it's really practical though. Uh, those are two NASCAR tires. They fit comfortably in there. Also, extremely practical hood prop here, AKA a broom handle. These, don't need them. This is a waste. The back of the seat is metal, so you're not gonna damage it. And we're missing a little more trim here on the trunk lid, but I'm not too concerned about that. That's just weight saving. It's got wood panels back here for the uh, trunk. The BMW had the exact same thing, and inevitably they get wet and they warp and they start getting torn up. Well, I just took these panels out for the first time, so let's take a look under here. Uh, uh, looks fine. Here we got the original carb. I think it's the same kind of Weber that we've got on there right now. It's just older. That's the real hood prop right there. That's human ingenuity. Dad says that's what you call using your head. That's right. And we get under here. We just ah, look at that. Now there's space for uh, two adults and two legless adults. Well, I actually thought that was going to be the end of the video, but apparently not because as we were taking the Fiesta off the trailer, well, something broke. Here you can see that the driver's side front wheel has a bunch of camber that it didn't have before. And whether or not that has anything to do with me dumping the clutch in the gravel and doing a big burnout outside the shop off camera is anyone's guess, but all I know is it needs to be fixed before it can be driven. With the car off the ground, we can see that the tie rods, ball joints, and control arm bushings are all completely toast. Also, the steering rack boots are completely missing, which is a little odd. Under the hood looks pretty good, aside from some melted wires and soot, which indicate that this car was once on fire. Overall though, pretty good, pretty complete, and not very rusty, although a couple things do need to be replaced, which kind of leads us to a bit of a problem. See, almost all of the enthusiasts for these cars are in Europe, which means that almost all the parts are in Europe, even aftermarket parts. Now, European shipping for parts is neither quick nor inexpensive, so I want to do that as few times as possible. 
With that in mind, I've hatched this plan to order two rounds of parts, so maybe that will minimize the possibility of losing my ass on a car that runs for about a week and then blows up. Not that that's ever happened before. The first round includes an order straight from jolly old England with all the suspension components, along with a slew of parts that just so happen to be available through Rock Auto. I've never used Rock Auto before, but who am I to say no to a couple dollar distributor cap or a couple cent rotor? The most important things, of course, are the new ball joints, tie rods, and control arm bushings, which are some of the cheapest ones I've ever seen, but naturally that's offset by international shipping costs. In any case, this list should at very least get it running and driving to the point where I can put the first real miles on the car that it's seen in 15 to 20 years. No pressure. And if it doesn't explode in the first week of owning it, we'll move on to order number two, where we fix all the worn out rubber bits and we make this car safe to drive. Well, <laughs> as safe as it ever was. Admittedly, this phase ain't cheap, but I'd like to be able to put several thousand miles on this thing without any issues, maybe even daily drive it to go get parts for the other cars. And even if I were to spend every dollar we've talked about here, we'd be coming in at well under $1,500 for a running, driving, really well-sorted, absolutely beautiful first-gen Ford Fiesta with brand new tires. Can't really beat that. On the plus side, we really don't need anything that's super hard to get. Exterior body panels, interior trim components, yeah, maybe a couple pieces on the interior are missing and maybe the trim on the outside is totally gone, but who cares about that stuff? It's not like this car is going to be going to any pebbled beaches anytime soon. Also, Cooper and James threw in six original wheels. Uh, the bolt pattern to a Fiesta is kind of specific to a Fiesta, so it's nice to have those, along with the original carb and also the front and rear bumpers. So the next step, I think, is to do compression and leak down tests while those parts are on the way, just to make sure the engine's not going to grenade itself in the first five minutes. I can tell you one thing we're not going to do, and that is paint it or restore the outside in any way. Patina preservation, my friends. It is beautiful exactly the way it is. So if you're going to comment saying, hey, you should paint it a certain color or you should do this and that, save your breath. It's perfect. I'm not going to change a bit of it. But for now, that's all I've got. This was a little different kind of video, so if you like it, feel free to let me know, and I will see you next time.